Noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve. Are you doing it the proper way? Or are you making your image look like it's made out of butter? Today on the channel, let's go through some tips and techniques to get you the best possible results. At the end of this video, we're gonna look at three different ways to do noise reduction, and we're gonna look at the results. Then I'm gonna show you the best setup to get the most out of noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve. So here I'm resolve, and as you can see, we have a very noisy image. Our darker areas are really pumping that ugly digital noise. Now, unfortunately for you guys, I've actually lit my face pretty well, so I don't have any noise reduction going on, and this will be important later on. Now, to access noise reduction, all you gotta do is come down to motion effects here. Now we're inside of noise reduction. Now we have some options that we can choose from or effects that we can choose from. We have temporal noise, temporal threshold. Now these two join together. We have spatial noise reduction and spatial threshold. And again, these two join together. Now we also have motion blur, but we're not gonna worry about motion blur today because that has nothing to do with noise reduction. So what I've done here is I've set up three different nodes. Now each of these different nodes I've set up differently when it comes to noise reduction. We're also gonna talk about node placement and why you should always put your node at the start of your node tree. Now, noise reduction can be a very complicated subject, so I'm gonna try and keep it as basic as possible. So first of all, let's start off with spatial noise reduction. Now, let's turn it on. What I've also done, and I've done this to each of these nodes, is I've put a power window around our subject here, and I've made it a outside power window, meaning it's only affecting this area, not this guy here. And then I've also done a qualification, meaning we're only hitting the darker areas of our scene, not the brighter areas. Now I've done this because I wanted to avoid hitting this guy here because he has no noise on him. So there's no point putting that noise reduction on him. Now, if you put noise reduction on him, it may reduce his skin to be really buttery smooth and look very abnormal. It's always important to know what part of the image you need to do noise reduction on and what part you don't. Don't unnecessarily do it on your entire image. So under space noise reduction, we have a couple of options. We have mode, radius, and then we have luma and chroma. So let's start with mode. So when it comes to mode, we have faster, better, and enhance. So if you want a quick noise reduction done, you would select faster. Now by choosing faster, obviously you're gonna get a quicker process when it comes to doing that noise reduction, but you may not get a better result. So I always choose better over enhance and faster. Now enhance sounds like it's really fancy, but really when it comes down to it, better works better than enhance. I know that sounded weird, but it is what it is. So now let's move on to radius, and this has got to do with the type of noise in your frame. So we have small, medium, and large. Now with this one here, obviously each different image is gonna look different, so I would experiment which one works best for you. Now let's move on to spatial threshold. So as you can see, we have luma and chroma. So we have light and color. Now by default, they are ganged together, but you can actually ungang them by pressing this button here. But I'm gonna put it back on because I'm gonna put this at basically the max when it comes to this type of noise reduction. So when we get playback, we can see if this is making a difference at all. So zero is no noise reduction, and then 100 is the maximum noise reduction you wanna do. And then blend is obviously how much you wanna blend it into your original image before that noise reduction. So in reality, this should give us a very good noise reduction. But to keep it as basic as possible, spatial noise reduction is working in a different noise frequency compared to temporal noise reduction. But anyway, let's go to full screen and I can show you the results. Now looking by our results, we have a pretty good noise reduction, but it's not amazing. So I feel like we can do some more work here to get a better result. Now, remember, we have this setting up really high. So that means we should get a good result. But as you can see, we still have a lot of noise. So let's move on to our second node here, a Luma one. So we'll turn this bad boy off. So let's highlight our Luma and turn it on. So now we are working under temporal noise reduction and we have some options again. We have frames, motion estimation type, motion range, and again, we have Luma Chroma, but this time we also have motion, which we're gonna experiment later on, and I'm gonna show you how this can affect your image. Now, unlike spatial noise reduction, which is more about high frequency noise, so high frequency noise, I probably should explain this, is tiny little bits of noise. Temporal noise reduction has got to do with the movement with inside your frame and how it separates this character here from the rest of your image here. So under frames here, I've got it set to five. Now, five is the maximum amount that you can have. So it's between five and zero. So five will try and give you the best possible result, while zero will give you a lesser result, but also zero will give you a quicker result, as in you'll be able to do your noise reduction faster than using obviously five, which will be a higher processing time. So let's move on to motion estimation type. 
Now, again, this has got to do with the process of noise reduction, as in how quickly you want it done. So obviously faster is gonna give you a quicker result, but then you may get a less desired result compared to better, which is gonna give you the best possible result, but then will be a slower process when it comes to doing that noise reduction. For us, we're gonna leave it on better and we're gonna move on to motion range. Now motion range, again, has got to do with movement inside your clip. And as you can see, we have a little bit of movement with this guy's hand, which obviously is me moving around. Now, if your clip had no motion whatsoever, you could simply put this to small. Now, small is obviously the smallest amount of movement inside your frame, but we have a little bit of movement, so I'm just gonna leave it on large. Now, I wouldn't have to do this. Maybe I'll just chuck it on medium, but for this sake, I'm gonna leave it on large. Now we can move on to the next one, which is temporal threshold, and where we have a luma and chroma. Now again, by default, these are ganged together, but I've taken them off because I only want to select Luma in this image and not Chroma. So again, Chroma is color, Luma is light. So in our Luma, we have it way up at 84.5. Chroma, we have it completely down. And on the motion, it's set to 50, which is the default. Now, after I've done this little part here, I'm gonna push it all the way up and then you may see a difference. So let's go full screen and let's look at what is going on. Now, as you can see by our playback, we still have a fair bit of noise going on. And that is because we're actually targeting the wrong type of noise. We're actually targeting the Luma noise and not the Chroma noise. So our image has a lot of color noise, not a lot of light noise. So this would actually be wrong. We'd wanna target the Chroma noise in this image here. Now, if we were to put our motion all the way up, this is gonna change our image in a way that is very unpleasing. And when you get playback, you should be able to notice it quite easy. Now, just try and pay attention to this area around here. When we put that motion all the way up, it looks like our screen is actually moving. So it looks like by moving this hand around here, it's pushing that screen or it looks like it's camera shake. Now, this is because the motion all the way up is trying to separate this area here on the non-moving background here. So it almost looks like it has a lock on here. And every time this hand moves, it moves this area here. So that is something to keep in mind when putting that motion all the way up. But we're just gonna put it all the way down and then we're gonna do playback again. And let's see if that fixes that problem we had before. So as you can see with our playback, we don't have that weird camera shake thing going on anymore. So that has fixed it up, but it also has made our noise even more prominent. So now we need to do a little bit more adjustments to get this noise to look a lot better than it is. So let's move on to Chroma. Now I've set it up the best possible way to get the best results. So under frame, I've set it to five. Motion estimation type, I've put it at better. Motion range is large. For our temporal threshold, Luma, I've kept it quite low because we want to target that color noise, not so much the light noise. So under chroma, I've kept it quite high at 26.8. Motion, we have a little bit of motion in our image here. So I'll set it at 16.9. Facial noise reduction, mode is better. Radius is large and we've kept it quite low. Now let's do playback and let's see what it looks like. And then let's talk about why these results are different to their other result. Looking at our image here, as you can see, we have a much better looking noise reduced image compared to our other noise reductions. And that is because we're targeting the chroma when it comes to our noise reduction. Now, why didn't spatial work as well? It's because spatial is targeting the high frequency noise more than the other types of noise. But what I've done, I've actually still used spatial noise reduction because temporal noise reduction may miss some of those high frequencies and we use spatial noise reduction to clean those other areas up. Without spatial noise reduction, we may not get a better noise reduced image. The way I use noise reduction is temporal goes first and I work out what my scene needs, if it needs luma or chroma. If it only needs one, then I try and target that one. I also think about the motion that's inside my frame here. As you can see, we have a little bit of motion so we can keep it quite low. Now, when it comes to motion estimation type, I do keep it better because I feel like that gives you a better result anyway. Motion range, I like to keep large also. But I still use spatial, which connects to temporal threshold because it cleans up the areas that spatial may have missed because spatial is got to do with high frequencies, which sometimes temporal doesn't pick up on. And so I think it's really important to make sure these two work together 
to get the best possible result. Now, when it comes to your node setup, always make sure your noise reduction is at the start of your node tree. This will give you the best results, but also you won't have to keep re-rendering it if you have it at the end. Now, what we can do before we finish, we can just do a side-by-side -side and see which one looks the best. Now, as you can see in our side-by-side, -side, Chroma is giving us the best results. That is because we've connected both the spatial and temporal together so they're working in a nice unison to give us really pleasing results. Now with our Luma node that we set up, it's not really doing a great job at all. That's because it's targeting the wrong type of noise. It's not targeting that color noise that's giving us that cleaner looking image. Now when it comes to spatial, it's giving us a slightly better result than the Luma node, but again, it's not really getting us the best results. And that is because it's targeting the wrong type of noise. Basically only targeting one third of the noise that we need to reduce. It actually looks a little bit muddy when you look at it pretty closely. So that is the video for today. I hope you've learned something. I recorded this video many times to make this. It was actually a lot harder to explain than I thought it was going to be. So I hope I've explained it well enough for you to understand. Noise reduction can be a very complicated thing when you start breaking down different frequencies. So hopefully this has come across as an easy way to understand. If it hasn't, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do about making another video explaining it in a more precise and informative way. I've been Drew from Gingo Productions. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.